we're pretending to be chatting? We are. Okay. I think so. <laughs> we're actors, by the way. We should be able <laughs> yeah, to this is terrible. do this. We're never getting booked again after this. <laughs> never going to get another job. It's really good to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Yeah, I've been watching your work <laughs> for, for ages, and I just really admire um, Thank you. The, the roles you take on Thank and you. how transformative a lot of them are. Thank um, you. I, was, I was wondering if I could just work out why you took <laughs> the role mm -hmm. in The Handmaid's Tale. Not, not because you shouldn't, it's an amazing role, <laughs> yeah. but what drew you to that role specifically? Um, I mean, I think for me, I, I had read the book a long time ago, um, but it had been a while, which was actually really great because it was able to read the scripts as if um, maybe as somebody who hadn't read the book, which I think is really important. So I was able to just connect to it as a viewer and, and as an actor and, and not as just a huge fan of the book. Um, for me, I think the main thing that I really connected to was this idea of a woman, a person who loses everything, mm. has everything taken away from her, her, her family, her daughter, her friends, her, her life, her career, her rights, and then uh, intends to survive and, and mm. just will not mm. give up. And like that human instinct I find really interesting and fascinating. And I think that um, for me, there's all this other stuff, there's all this sort of political sociological stuff surrounding the material in the show. For me, it's essentially about a person who won't give up on mm. getting back what they feel is theirs. Yeah. And I feel like that for me was the thing that I connected to as a woman, as a human, and, and as an actor. We tried to cross in Maine with my husband and we split up. They shot him. How about yeah. you? Well, I mean, with just the, to, just to follow on from that, yeah, though, yeah, yeah. I, I kind of, it's a really very potent place to start, isn't it? As a starting yeah. point is someone who loses everything. Yeah. Or someone who faces, you mm -hmm. know, the possibility of losing everything. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of very dangerous place for a human being to be. Mm -hmm. And it can go one of two ways, you mm -hmm. know, the, the decision to adapt, to survive, yeah. or the decision to kind of self-destruct or destroy others around you. And Exactly. Um, I mean, I guess for Nasir Khan in uh, The Night Of, he's a character who when we meet him, or quite soon into you know episode one, he's someone on the precipice of losing everything. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess, that is also what attracted me to that role mm -hmm. because I was unaware of the transformation that the character would go through yeah. from episodes two to eight. I hadn't read those Were scripts. You? Oh, they that's weren't given to us. No, so you we just, just had, had the one. pilot. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So I thought the whole thing would be about, um, you know, I, I didn't realize it would branch off in the way it did with, wow. you know, with the with John Turturro's yeah. character and Bill Camp's character, and it and becomes a spooling would, ensemble yeah. thing. Yeah, and your character would go through such a transformation and become sort of a completely different person by the end. Yeah, I was totally unaware of that. Wow. If I'd known, I would wouldn't have gone anywhere near. It. <laughs> um, if I knew how much gym work would be involved in the role, it right. totally tricked me. Thanks a lot, Steve yeah. Zalian. Um, They're like, it's easy. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. You're just this guy and something bad's going to happen. You're going to be fine. <laughs> exactly. Don't worry about it. Anyone asks you anything, how you doing? Isn't it a nice day? You say, gee, I don't know. Talk to my lawyer. Okay? Say it. Okay. No, no. Say that to me. I don't know. I don't know. Talk to? Talk to my lawyer. Good. I guess, yeah. So what, what also appealed to me was putting myself in a place where I would, I, you stand to lose everything. Yeah. Because... Thankfully, I've, I've never been in that place myself. Same. So it kind of felt scary. How are you going to connect, connect to that feeling in mm -hmm. an honest way? Mm -hmm. And it actually took me a while and a few different cracks and I still don't feel like I, I really got it, but it, this, it, it's a tricky thing to kind of feeling to connect to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, how did you kind of approach that? How First did you of all, you did get it. <laughs> oh, thank you, you totally got it. Um, yeah, we were talking about this actually a little bit. I think that before this, um, I think that, you know, for me, I had uh, kind of a similar thing where I only had the first two, but I obviously had the book to refer to. So I sort of knew where things might be mm. going. But I actually found the, uh, the transformation into somebody who 
is um, stronger and is putting on, uh, pushy, puts on an act by the end. She sort mm. of joins the system in order to beat it. And like you were saying about, do you survive or do you give up? She sort of sees people around her giving up and accepting their lot and accepting the life that's been given to them. And she just refuses to do it. And she figures out, it is not spoiling anything because it's sort of in the book, but uh, she figures out that the only way to do that is to make your enemies closer. Wow. You know, which is so similar to your show. Mm -hmm. um, I just rewatched the last three episodes, like I told you, and I was like, that's the parallel. That's the parallel between the two shows. Both of them are imprisoned. Both of yep. them are imprisoned, perhaps wrongly. Uh, both of them sort of, in order to survive, adapt to their prisons. Absolutely. You know, because they have to. Mm. And I, it brings up the interesting question of, would they... Uh, is that always in them? Like, that's what I wanted to ask you yeah, about. Absolutely. Nas was like, is that hardness, that toughness, do you think that was in him or do you think that was completely created by the system that he was in? Um, I kind of feel like the transformation that my character goes through and the transformation that your character goes through yeah. is, is, is a kind of, is an illustration of the kind of, uh, like, foundational, like, idea behind acting, mm -hmm. which is that in different circumstances, we can be anyone, mm -hmm. right? right? Like, so I kind of believe that we have it in us to be, to, yeah, to, to be any given version yeah. of, of a human being. Yeah. Um, it's a situation that breeds character. So I think it's only right that when the situation evolves or changes so dramatically, when the stakes change so dramatically, when you know society has gone through this crazy civil war and all mm -hmm. its values are turned upside down, or when you go from being a kind of college kid to being someone in Rikers Island, mm. it's only right that the character you know, adapts to survive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, so in a way, I, I kind of totally bought that and yeah. I think it's something that I find to be true in my day-to-day -day life even. yeah you know we're different around our parents we're different at here, a photo shoot here. exactly as to yeah home, totally. oh, I'm totally a teaser at a photo shoot yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm my truest self but uh but you yeah, really it's, lock in yeah exactly shoots. that's what I'm in the zone <laughs> so so I don't know I kind of feel like um it, it's quite truthful even yeah. though it's quite a dramatic transformation yeah I, I feel it's quite truthful 380 Six to 383. I'm rusty. Then we'll have to have a rematch. All right, I'll check my schedule. Uh, can I pick up on something that you said yeah, before? Yeah, I have a question for you too. All right. Okay, <laughs> I wanted to ask, you said you, you, didn't, you didn't use the book, the novel, as your Bible. Not at first. Okay, yes, yeah, so tell me about that because I, I would I would have, thought that you've got this rich resource here. Oh yeah, for sure. So the script gives you the tip of the iceberg yeah. and you've got the, the depths of the iceberg in the novel. Or did you find that to be distracting or no, confining? I, no, I just, when I read the first two scripts, I hadn't read the book in a while. So I read the first two scripts in this vacuum and I was able to see, to connect to it as a story on its own. Mm -hmm. Then the book completely became my Bible. I mean, right. that thing is a dog-eared copy. <laughs> it is like stained. It's been in the bathtub. It's gone everywhere with me. Wow. Highlighted. You yeah, know how yeah, it is. Yeah. Like such actor like being back nerd. In college, just exactly. Like, yeah. Totally. Just nerding out. Like I've you know memorized passages from it. It was the greatest resource. Such a gift as an actor yeah. as you can imagine, because so much of our show is very loyal to the book. And so, especially the first season, and so we would be doing a scene that's in the book. Yeah, yeah, And the yeah. book is all very first-person narrative. It's mm. all voiceover, it's all in yeah. her head. So I was able to go to the scene and, and look at exactly <laughs> what she it. was thinking yeah, yeah. and exactly what she was feeling and described also in sort of this beautiful poetic way that I could never think but of. But was so that confined, was in any way, was that kind of, did you feel confined confining. by that? Um, rather than being able to kind of, I mean, obviously, it's a beautifully written novel, yeah. and so it's open to interpretation, and it yeah. kind of it leaves enough negative space, even though it's got a big internal monologue. I think that's the for thing. To, so. I think that's the thing. It does. It 
does have a lot of negative space. It's, it, it can be very vague at times. It's, it's, you know, it's beautifully written. It's not all spelled out mm -hmm. for you. So I didn't feel like it was confining because it, it doesn't give you enough. You know, she would describe, she describes how the character feels like in one line that's a little bit vague and poetic. You know, like my favorite lines from the book is, um, I feel like the word shatter. And you're like, Amazing. that's it. What a gift to an actor, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So you've got these these signposts. Totally. These clues. Yes. I always feel like doing work on a script is like it's a detective yeah. yes. thing. In a weird way, it was kind of being on the precipice of Nasir Khan's great change mm. that I found the most difficult. Mm -hmm. It's once he kind of tips over into the depths of hell yeah. and becomes one of its, you know. The, minions. You can um, embrace that. You, yeah, that has a momentum of its own. Yeah. You, once you embrace that logic. Yeah. But it was kind of being on the precipice, putting yourself in that place. Yeah. And I think it was um, in episode four. Uh -huh. It's quite a small scene actually, but it's um, uh, or in episode three. I can't remember exactly when he's up it. when he's up in court, and um, he's he's facing the possibility of being bailed or not. Yes. Um, just being in that hmm. situation, just being quite literally on the precipice, okay, you get to go home or not. I, right. I just found it quite tricky to kind of mine the reality of that situation yeah. because it's one that I've never been in. Yeah. And um, in those circumstances, what I found to be really useful was I didn't have a book. Right. But I had hours and hours of interviews that I'd done with inmates oh, amazing. at Rikers Island Prison um, who'd been to Rikers or been through the prison system and come out recently. Oh, wow. So I find that I need to create some kind of Bible. I need to always create some kind of higher authority. Yeah. So if I don't have a book, then it's got to be the interviews, yeah. uh, something drawn from the real world. Mm -hmm. And so I would start just listening to those interviews wow. and just let them wash over me and try not to control what they would do to me, but just... Try yeah, and absorb them just somehow. try to sort of absorb my osmosis. Did you have a specific, um, like, did you map out when that change happens for him, or did you just feel it out? Like, did you? Or was I, it? I went because you shot in order, right? It wasn't cross border. We did. Or okay. We did. We shot in order. Um, you know, yeah, I did the whole kind of. Charting it all thing. out. I, yeah. I bought a chart. Yeah, yeah. I bought a massive wall <laughs> chart, like the size of this. TV. Fantastic. And it was up on my and Mine's my Mine's usually in New much York. more ghetto. It's just like pieces of paper sort of taped together on the floor, you know. Nice. I like the chart. Weird That's very professional. Yeah. yeah, I bought different highlighters and very the whole good. thing. And it's very important to have different colors thank you. when you're acting. Thank you. Different colored highlighters. Um, <laughs> but the weird thing was, uh, yeah, I mean, so my apartment in New York looked like a serial killer's, and it's just all these weird <laughs> totally. diagrams. Pins. I like, yeah, you know, like terrible drawings of wolves. <laughs> And like uh, <laughs> knives and, right. and this whole thing. And um, I really did chart it out. Yeah. I, chart, I mapped out the whole thing. Yeah. Um, you know, where those turning points were, where those scenes were, mm -hmm. when, where the wolf grows, when the puppy dies, how mm -hmm. he goes from being a, a spectator to a player mm -hmm. in this dangerous game. Walked up the stairs, down the hall, to the bedroom to get dressed and say goodbye. So I touched her to wake her. I felt in my hand something wet. I turned on the lamp next to the bed and saw her, the blood, the wounds. What was your most difficult moment when you were shooting the night of? I was trying to impose um, a rational structure on it a bit yeah. too much. Yeah. And actually, I, I, I got into the flow of it more when I realized I had to just get out of my own way right. and allow the circumstances to kind of propel me yeah. rather than imposing a shape on the journey too yeah, much. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if you ever find that. I find, I do the chart thing too, and I find it very, very helpful. I find that I, what I learned to do was exactly that. To let go to of let it. To let go of it, yeah. to make the chart and you map it all out and you have your scenes and however your specific way of doing it. This is the arc of your character in general. And then I, I found, I look at it maybe the first couple of weeks, month of filming and then I lose it. I literally don't know where it is. Like I'd stop looking at yeah. it. So I find the same thing. Like you, it's somewhere in there. Yeah, like but the, it's only useful once you burn it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And you can kind of follow it, but I find the same thing that you can't follow it too closely. I almost wonder whether the process of doing that is more um, to kind of, reassure right. us it's, it's yeah. more about our own insecurity right. and having a framework I, totally like i have a plan if anyone asks exactly <laughs> like, i've done my research if, if there's the director a spot asks test me. yeah um yeah <laughs> totally i tried to run with her but 
She is... She is so heavy. I really try. I would say for me, kind of calling back to what we were talking about earlier, my character does have to go through sort of this transformation. She does have to sort of uh, learn how to work the system, basically. And in order to do that, she has to put on this act of enjoying herself um, and having a good time and, and that she wants to be there in these certain situations. The most difficult thing I found was acting, acting, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to act like you're acting like and not be you know what I mean and like not be too good at it yet which is exactly the same thing it's that transition point <laughs> it is from the one person to the other from the person that came into the prison to the person that the prison makes you um, that transition points really difficult because you can't be too good at it yet so you're sort of trying something for the first time yeah and you don't want to be too you don't want to be too confident but you also don't want to look too lame because you have to convince the other character that you're whatever you're trying to convince them of. Mm. So for me, that was the most difficult thing to figure out. And it was a similar thing. It was like in the middle of the season. And once I kind of got over that, oh, got over that, I was like, okay, great. But I kind of did the same, a similar thing where I sort of, I think it's similar, where I sort of embraced that. I was like, well, she doesn't know what she's doing either. So this feeling of, of insecurity and this feeling of, oh my God, I'm a terrible actor is actually how she feels. Amazing, Right. Yeah. So I was like, so that's okay. Like if she feels awkward and if she feels nervous, you know, that old thing, like just use it. Like it's true, mm. you just kind of fall into it. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's weird, isn't it? How kind of the onset and offset world yeah. and emotions kind yeah. of start mirroring each other, mm -hmm. even if it's for totally different reasons. Absolutely. Usually the dread of like completely screwing up in a scene <laughs> yeah. it kind of gets used when you're just about to go on trial. Yeah, exactly. Or, or the nervousness of, you know, yeah, being on a stand. I mean, that's exactly right. That's how, how he would feel, mm. not knowing what to say and not knowing what to do. You know, so it does feed, it does, if you can allow it, I feel like it does feed the scene. But that's where, yeah, the confidence to let that in. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Alfred. I had another name, but it's forbidden now. So many things are forbidden now. Riz, how are you dealing with, you've had a really big few years here, uh, and you've got things that have happened and things that are happening and coming out, and it's a lot, and it's a lot sort of at the same time. How are you feeling about that? Like, how are you, has it changed how you approach your work at all? or? Um, I'm hoping that it doesn't change how yeah. I approach my work. Yeah. Uh, I remember when I did Nightcrawler, um, I just had such a sense of freedom going into that yeah. film. Uh, and I remember working opposite someone like Jake. He was carrying a certain awareness that eyes are on him. Mm -hmm. You know, people have seen the last movie he's done. Right. People will see the next movie he's done mm. because he occupies a certain position in the culture. And um, I kind of in a weird way, almost felt bad for him that he had to Be navigate that. that. Yeah. There was this other kind of filter between him and the work. Yeah, um, and the self-awareness. Yeah, 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 and he kind of does it amazingly, and that's where why he's you know such a great actor. But um, that idea is something that's new to me, the mm. idea that people might seek out my work mm -hmm. now because they might have you know, got to know me through the night of or right. Star Wars. That's, that's new to me, and, yeah. and I think maybe there isn't that same sense of freedom. There's just a bit more self-awareness. Yeah. But on the flip side, I'm just, I'm really enjoying meeting people I admire. Yeah. You know, I'm enjoying being in the same room as someone like yourself, you know? <laughs> I, no, genuinely. And so I, I hope that kind of the pros of soaking up the yeah. wisdom of people who, who, you know, whose work is so great yeah. outweighs that self-awareness. good things that come of it. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Tell me a little bit about what the journey has been like since Mad Men. How have you dealt with your, you know, your fame? Um, Next step. And, and how have you dealt with, um, you know, how have you navigated what roles yeah. to take on? Um, I, I just sort of try to do it in a, in a, the most unselfconscious way. You know, I, I never in, intended to be on a TV show um, at all, really. And then Mad Men came along and. Uh, I got the job, first of all. I mean, when you're an actor and you're 23 in New York, you get a job and you do it. Uh, so it was an amazing script and, and, and that sort of just sort of happened. I've never really planned anything. So I kind of 
just keep doing that. I keep not planning. Um, I try to, you know what I mean? I try, I, love that. Like, yeah, I, just, yeah. I, just, I look for the best material I can, the best writing I can, um, the best people to work with that I can, because I'm a true believer in, you know, the people that you work with definitely make you better. Um, and I want to learn from the p people that I work with, you know, mm -hmm. so I can become better. So for me, it's just trying to find the best people and the best material. And if that's in TV, that's great. If it's film, great, theater, great, whatever. I don't really care. It's just about finding things that I want to do and not mm. being self-conscious about it. Do you find that certain mediums allow you to access that work more easily than others? Like, I know you've been doing mm. a lot of theater and a lot of TV. Yeah. Um, is it fair to say more so than film? For sure, like, right? for sure. Um, Especially the things that, that people been, sort of know me for. Yeah, yeah, so why do you think that is? Is that because you're used to working within the rhythms of theater and film uh, and TV? Is it because you feel like that's where a lot of the writer driven material is? What, yeah. I think it's it just a, happened. I think it's a combination of things. It's 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 partly circumstantial and partly I came along at a time when television was just having its I mean, Mad Men was a big part of Totally. That why golden we're in this age. Era. Exactly. Yeah. And then before that I was on the West Wing for a long time. Yeah. Uh, just as a reoccurring character. So I sort of came along and came of age in this time when television was sort of taking over and, and all the writers were going there and the directors were going there and then the actors started going there. And, and so it's kind of circumstantial. It just sort of happened. I find that I really love um, the longer format. Uh, I love it's it, and the same reason I love theater, you know, just the chance to do it over and over and over mm -hmm. again and, and try to get it right is great. Um, I love television or a mini series in, in that sense because I love that you have six hours, you know, or eight hours. I love that you have 10 hours to figure it out. You know, you get yeah. a little bit at a time and you just sort of try to put the puzzle together. And sometimes you have seven years to create a character and your life informs the character and you change and the character changes and that whole process I find actually really fun. Wow. Um, so, I mean, I love doing films too, but for me it's almost odd sometimes because I go and I do a movie and it's like over in two months and I'm, I'm like, is that it? We're not going back? Wow. Not, I don't get to play the character again? So it's kind of your, 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 your kind of tendency towards perfectionism yeah, maybe. That, that drives yeah. you to that. It, maybe it is, yeah, totally. Having a bigger canvas. Yeah, exactly. Like I like the idea of continuing to like chip away have at something. Have another crack at it, have another yeah, crack at it. Yeah, you know, I, I really enjoy that and I really like I think that directors as well and writers and they they I find that they sort of blossom in television because they have six hours to tell a story. Yeah, it you is know? weird because I think when I do a film, I, I kind of feel like, and particularly you know, ninety percent of the work I've done has been British independent films. Yeah, and um, you know, you're looking at like a, maybe a five week shoot if you're lucky, right? And uh, you work out what you're doing after the first month. Yeah. And yeah. just when you've worked out yeah. what you're doing, the whole thing's over. Yeah. So terrible. Yeah. The worst. And then they're like, "It's and then you're done." You're like, "I know. I just, I just got it though. We're just gonna have to go back to <laughs> yeah, the, exactly. just go back to the beginning if we can. I need That'd to take be great. A out of your <laughs> yeah. book. That's I feel I like that about back. like yeah. a, a about like six month jobs. We get to like month four or five, and I'm like, we should go back to the beginning because I yeah. really, I got this now, and I know. Do what you I'm ever doing. feel like that on season four? <laughs> oh like, yes. Right. Oh yes. So maybe it's just that three quarters <laughs> point in general this is, is when things fall into. Seventy-five percent exactly. But do you feel like with with something like? Because uh, you've done sort of this massive, you know, franchise thing, and then you've done television, you've done independent film, like you said. Do you feel like there's a, a like one that you thrive in the most, or you enjoy the most, or you, do you approach them all the same? Um, I actually feel like one of the guiding lights for me in life, uh, in, in terms of the people I surround myself with in yeah. my life, um, and the experiences I seek out, is is um, to embrace a kind of diversity yeah. of experiences. And- um, Yeah, I mean, even life in music as well. Right, yeah, so I guess um, it's just something that, I don't know, I kind of grew up in a certain way mm -hmm. where I was kind of bouncing around between very different worlds. Mm -hmm. My home life, my school life, my social life, they were, all existed in very different ways. I was almost different people altogether mm -hmm. from one part of the day to the next. So Interesting. If I get, yeah, if <laughs> I get kind of like hemmed into one thing too much, I just get really claustrophobic. So wow. I just kind of need to like, I need 
it to be eclectic. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a kind of just a weird urge that I. That makes total sense, though. Absolutely. So that's you like going back and forth between yeah. different things. But you know, I think there's something to be said for kind of committing to one kind of rhythm for a certain period yeah. of time, yeah. so you can kind of hone that craft. Right. So yeah. if I ever stop being this restless, then <laughs> yeah. maybe I'll, I'll find a way <laughs> we'll of doing that. Lock you down that. somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, on our cop show. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That'll run for 12 years. <laughs> Elizabeth, can you tell me your um, best, best <laughs> so or annoying. worst? Or oh, actually, a best and worst audition Damn it. story. Damn it. The thing is, is, I was looking at this question and and the best and worst audition, and, and all auditions are sort of terrible, and the best ones are the ones that you get, you know? Or was there one that you went in saying, I know I'm going to get this because this is just me and I prepared, and you were in a sense of flow in the audition and you got it. It, was just, it just went exactly how you well, saw it in your head. Actually, sort of like that, but the audition for Top of the Lake for season one um, was an interesting process because I never thought I was going to get it. I th was sure it was going to go to somebody wonderful, you know, like Amy Adams or something. I was like, she's going to be wonderful in this role. Um, so I didn't think I was going to get it. So I just sort of went, plodded along in the process and didn't think anything was going to happen, which was kind of nice because I was kind of relaxed. I spoke to Jane Campion on the phone and she said, um, we talked for about an hour. I was very nervous. She was very nice. And she said, you know, I'd love for you to do some sort of an accent because I have an Australian accent in the show. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, why which can't? Which is very, which is a great Australian accent. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I was like, I can't do Australian, obviously, but uh, I guess I could do British, um, I think. So I went into the audition and I, and I had three scenes to do. And I started with the first one in a British accent. And it just felt so wrong because she doesn't have a British accent. Right. So I felt like I was not playing the character. And I did the first scene, we taped it and everything. And I was like, you know what? I actually had the thought in my head, I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose this. I'm not gonna get this because of this accent. Uh, and so I said, I'm not gonna do the accent, I'm just gonna do my American accent. I'm so sorry, but like, it's, I can't act in an accent yet. Uh, and, I, and, and it was the greatest thing I ever did. I actually don't know if I would have gotten it if I'd done the accent. Um, and I, was, I just did it in an American accent. Oh, wow, how uh -huh. brave. Yeah. Thank you. And I, I felt, I was like, screw you, Jane Campion. I'm just going to do my own thing. <laughs> um, and I, uh, I felt good about it, but I still kind of didn't think I was going to get it. But I did. So that's my kind of, it is actually best and worst because I was sort of terrified, uh, but then did end up getting it. So it ended well. Wow. What about you, Riz? What's your best or worst audition? Um, you know, in a, for a similar reason, I think the audition process for the night of was so simple. I knew oh, really? nothing about it. I knew, I literally knew nothing about it. I didn't have a title page or my script that I was sent. Wow. I was just boarding a plane. My agent said, I'm sending you a script. You've got an audition when you land. Wow. Um, I read it. I didn't know who'd written it. If I had, I would, would have been really nervous. Yeah. Um, I didn't have HBO. Yeah. I'd never seen The Sopranos. I knew it was like a big TV station in America. Right. Um, and I just turned up and just did these two scenes. And it was so... I, I knew nothing about it. I, di mm. I didn't know that I should be nervous. Exactly. I didn't know that it was a big deal. Yeah. Um, oh, it's so great. Yeah, all I had was these sides. And I thought these were really cool scenes. Yeah. And I, and I just did them. So that was good. But I think probably my worst audition was for Slumdog Millionaire. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why? I mean, Danny Boyle, if you met him, is like the world's nicest guy. Uh -huh. And um, he made me audition for the role that Dev ended up playing uh -huh. so wonderfully well. And he was like, you're not right for that. Play his brother, um, who's got a bit more edge and he was a bit more like kind of a rough kind of guy. Yeah. This character. And... Um, I, I did this scene where I'm kind of shouting at Danny. Danny's playing the other character <laughs> and his camera person's in there kind of filming it. And then Danny says, you know what, Riz, you can, you can do whatever you want. You can, you can get up in my face. You, oh can, God. you can really, you know, don't <laughs> oh, worry, no. the camera guy, will, he'll get everything. He's moving around, handheld. And the camera guy's like, yeah, man, yeah, don't worry. I got you. <laughs> so I was like, okay, okay, I'm all G'd up. And um, <laughs> goes action. And before you know it, I've got Danny Boyle up against the wall. Oh, no. I'm like screaming in his face, like <laughs> spitting in his face. And I've like ripped his shirt. I've ripped his the seams of his shirt open, and snapped spitting into Danny oh Boyle's God. naked chest. And the camera guy is not getting any of this because I'm like he's yeah. like turned off the camera. Yeah, <laughs> um, press, pressing a red button on the wall, and uh, That's says amazing. cut. Danny looks at me and goes, "Okay, cut." And uh, all right, Riz, thanks a lot for coming in. Thanks a oh, lot. No. I was like. And the thing is, oh, I walked no. out of that audition going, I nailed that. Right. 
<laughs> I was so into that. You were oh, like, you could wow, feel my passion. That yeah. was amazing. <laughs> I so got that. Yeah. I don't know anything. That's a great story.